Well, welcome back. Are you ready for our topic today? It is called arc length. So we want you to very carefully copy down these definitions and uh, fill in the blank here with us. So pause when you need to. An arc is a portion of the circumference of a circle. So let's go ahead and make this sketch that we have in our notebook here. And whoops, we'll be... And again, let me be real careful to draw the sketch in. And notice this A to B that I have marked here in a different color. This represents the arc of a circle, a portion of the circumference. And of course, circumference represents the entire distance around the outside. The length of an arc is the length of its portion of their circumference. So if we ask you to find the length of the arc, basically, I'm just going to highlight it in red in this picture below, we're asking you to find how long that is. Now you'll notice I've labeled a few things in this circle. R stands for radius, so we'll make a note off to the side. Theta, of course, we've talked about a bunch of times by now, is just your angle. And S, that's our new one for today, S is going to represent arc length. Okay, so S is your arc length. Now, just like anything else in math, we have a nice easy formula that goes along with this. And here it is, arc length equals theta times R. And now we just said that arc length is going to be represented by this letter S. So here's the formula we like to use. S equals theta R. Sometimes you'll hear us call it the SOR formula. S-O-R, S equals theta R. Just kind of an easy way to, to say it and help you memorize it. S equals theta R. And let me just reiterate that S is your arc length. Theta is just your angle, and R is your radius. And those are the only things we need. SOAR, S equals theta R, the arc length formula. Now, probably the most important thing about this formula, and we're going to need you to, to star it, highlight it. This needs to be nice and big in your notebook. It's about theta. And we talked about converting to degrees in radians. Well, theta in this formula must be in radians. So if it's not, you're going to have to convert it, and if it is, all the better for us. So let's give a few examples of work, but remember, theta has to be in radians. Example 1. Find in centimeters the length of an arc intercepted by a central angle of 4 radians in a circle with a radius of 3.5. So we want a little sketch of each picture they're describing. Okay, so we clearly know we have a circle. Put your center in. And let's um, highlight a few things here. It says an angle of 4 radians and a radius of 3.5. So I can easily put those in my picture. So there's my radius of 3.5. Uh, it's at an angle of 4 radians. So I'm just going to make an angle. And I'm going to put my 4 radians in there. And the question says, find the length of the arc. Okay, so you're finding that section we just drew, and I'm going to change colors just to make it even more bold. I am finding this distance here, the length of the arc. So I'm going to put an S there for arc. Now, um, I am taking for granted that you know what a central angle is. Basically, that's just the angle in the center. Okay, so let's just be clear. They are talking about this angle in the center if you think back to your geomet geometry days. So at this point, I have everything I need. I just have to know when I see that word arc, we're talking about the SOAR formula, S equals theta R. And always ask yourself first, is theta in radians? And it should be pretty obvious. They tell you in words that it's in radians. So you don't have to do anything fancy. So I'm going to say I don't know the arc length. My theta is 4. Use parentheses when you sub in. And my radius is 3.5. And now S is already by itself. I simply just have to multiply these two. And I get an arc length. Whoops of 14 centimeters. Now, they're not all that simple, um, but they don't get too much more difficult. The only key thing you have to catch is, isn't theta in radians? 
Number two, in a circle, a central angle of one-third radians, okay, so again, I'm going to highlight that. Oops. Central angle is one-third radians, and I love to see that word radians. Has a subtended arc of three centimeters, so they're describing the arc. Find the length in centimeters of the radius. Okay, so they start talking about that arc length formula, so I'm going to draw a circle out and label what I can. Uh, so one more time, they said I have one-third radians and an arc of three centimeters. And the question is, what is the radius? So I'm still using S equals theta R, my SOAR formula. This time I know the arc is three centimeters. I know my theta is one-third and it's already in radians. And the question is, what is R? So at this point, um, I know some of you are saying divide over by one-third. I'm going to encourage you not to divide by fractions and to multiply each side by the reciprocal. Try to do it without a calculator by now. So if I want to kill a one-third, I'm going to multiply this by three over one. And then you'll notice the threes will cancel, the one will cancel, and I'm left with just R. And whatever I do to that side, I need to balance it out. So on this side, I'll get nine. So I have a radius of nine, I believe, centimeters. All right, let's try a harder one. A sector has a radius of 12 centimeters. So again, they're giving me the radius and an angle of 65 degrees. Find to the nearest tenth of a centimeter its arc length. So this time we are looking for S. All right, so again, I'm going to draw it out. I listed it out, and I'm going to draw it out. Radius is 12, central angle is 65 degrees, watch that. The question is, what is the length of that arc here? All right, so this is as hard as the question can get. And the whole catch is, is theta must be in radians. Now, you'll notice it's not. They clearly said 65 degrees for theta. So I have to convert that. So very simple. I'm just going to start with my arc length formula, S equals theta times R. Um, we were looking for S. Theta was 65 degrees, radius was 12. So I'm going to say S equals, and I'm going to write 65 down, but I've got to do one extra step here. I have to turn that to radians. So think back. What do you multiply by to turn to radians? Well, a radian always has a pi on top, so I know I'm going to multiply by pi over 180. And then, I believe we said it had a radius of 12. So times 12. So again, the only trick to this problem was making sure that you multiplied this theta into pi, by pi over 180 to turn it into radians. Now, at this point, you can just grab your calculator and multiply. But again, you know, those of you moving on to a pre-calc class next year, or maybe even taking the bridge, we want you to, you know, start multiplying in your head a little bit. So I'm going to put this over 1, and I'm going to put this over 1. And basically, when I multiply fractions, I'm just going to multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. So 65 times 12 gets me 780 pi over 1 times 180 times 1 is just 180. Now, depending how they want their answer, if they said leave it in terms of pi, you would be done. But if they said to the nearest tenth or hundredth, then we want the calculator answer. And if I scroll back up, uh, it did say to the nearest tenth, so I know I need a decimal answer. So now I am going to type 780 pi divided by 180 in, and I do get to the nearest tenth 13.6 centimeters. Okay, so just be real careful whether they want the answer in terms of pi or they want a decimal answer, but they are equivalent. Let's try a couple more. Number four, a plastic protractor represents half a circle. The protractor shown at the right has a radius of 2.5, which is already nicely there for you, and an angle AOB is measured at 45. Remember, when you name an angle, you name it by that middle letter. So you start at A to O to B, and the middle one they talk about is 45. What is the length X and in inches of the outer edge of the protractor? Okay, so that's this X here, the outer edge. Um, express your answer in terms of pi. So here's an example where I'm saying no calculator. They want the answer in terms of pi. So, very simple. They talk about an arc, 
in a radius and an angle, so that's my SOAR formula, S equals theta R. Let's see if we can just write down everything we need. We are looking for the arc. The radius is 2.5 inches, and theta, they tell us, is 45 degrees. So hopefully that catches you off guard there. You know theta has to be in radians. So we have to do that one extra step. So I'm going to say, whoops, S equals 45. I can't leave it like that, though, because that's degrees. So I have to multiply by pi over 180 and a radius of 2.5. All right, so again, we don't want you to type all this in in the calculator. We want you to make fraction here, fraction here, and I'm doing that because they want to see pi in the answer. It says leave in terms of pi. So I'm going to multiply across the top. Okay, so if you need a calculator for 45 times 2.5, that's okay. Uh, that gets you 112.5 oops, 0.5 times pi all over 180. And at this point, I'm going to cheat with my calculator just a little bit. I am going to divide 112.5 divided by 180, and I get 0.625, and if I do math frac, I get 5 over 8. So it reduced it for me. And then don't forget, you still have times pi. They just don't want a decimal answer. They want to see the simplified and have a pi at the end of it. Okay, so it's fair game to type this in, get that reduced fraction by hitting your math frac button, and then leave pi at the end. All right, read this to yourself, or I'll read it out loud with you, and then try it on your own and see if you've got this by now. A wedge-shaped slice is cut from a circular pizza. I think you can all picture that. The radius of the pizza is 8 inches. The rounded edge of the crust, also known as the arc of the slice, is 6.4. What is the angle so of the pointed slice? So they're asking for this angle here called theta. Okay, so again, hopefully you're picturing this slice of pizza of an arc. Maybe you'll never think of pizza the same way again. Hopefully you'll be thinking of some nice trig. And go ahead, use your S equals theta R formula and solve for theta. Pause it, try it on your own. I've got 6.4 equals 8 theta, divide by 8, and in my calculator, I get theta equals 0.8. And now we're just going to assume that answer is in radians. I don't need to do anything fancy to it. 0.8 radians. Hopefully that matched with your answer. Well, guys, we made it to the last one of the night. Um, again, read it to yourself, or I can read it with you, pause it, try it on your own. Draw a picture and see if you get the same answer. And hopefully you're feeling pretty good about this arc length topic. So I said, I highlighted, I have a radius of 3. Theta is 2 radians, and I love to see radians. I don't have to do anything fancy. And the question was, what is the length of the arc? So I started with S equals theta R, finding S. Again, this 2 is awesome. I don't have to convert it. It's already in radians, and I know that because it says the word radians, times 3. So I get an arc length of six centimeters. Well, hope you had a, a good night with your notes here and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow.